Hello everyone, and welcome to Lure Vark Shares. This episode is going to be a long one, as I'm going to go through the basics of how to use the particle editor in Source Filmmaker. So to start with, from a standard Source Filmmaker scene, to get to the particle editor, you go to Windows, Particle Editor Tool, and it brings up this menu. Okay, so from here, we're going to do a new particle. We will create it, and this will be named rain okay so I'm going to try and expand this and fail okay so just going through the basics over here we have different sections in the system properties we have the renderer operator initializer emitter children force generator and constraint I'm going to briefly go over what each of these are so the renderer determines how the particle is drawn. Is it a simple particle? Is it just you know a sprite just smack dab somewhere in the world? Is it a sprite trail which has length and dimension? Is it a blob which is a pseudo 3D object that has uh, blob-like qualities where if multiple blobs are together they form a single mesh as opposed to individual spheres intersecting? or a few other renderers. Those are the most common three. The operator is some effect that happens to the particle sometime during its life. This could be things such that control movement or transparency or color. Basically these are the animations that occur to the particle during its lifetime. The initializer is a set of operators or uh, elements that occur as soon as the particle is first created, actually I think they're technically done before the particle is created, but basically it's all just startup stuff. The emitter controls how the particle is spawned. You can have it spawn all at once, you can have it spawn forever, have it spawn a certain amount, uh, control how fast it spawns, and things like that. Children is for more complicated particles, which we are not going to do in this video, but you can have a particle system that is itself composed of multiple different particles all at once. So if you, for example, find yourself constantly spawning two or three or four particles and you always have them working together, then you could create a new particle that pulls all of those particles in as children. And then instead of spawning those four individual ones all the time, you just spawn that one parent that has the children. The force generator is a special type of operator that just relies purely on generating forces which push the particles in certain ways or pulls them in certain ways. And then the constraints properties refers to mostly things related to collisions and such like that, such as you know putting in an arbitrary plane that the particles can't pass through, for example. So the bare minimums of what you need For a particle are a renderer, an initializer, and an emitter. So we're going to start with those. So we're going to come over here to renderer, right click add, and we are going to do animated sprites. No, actually we're going to do sprite trail. We're going to do sprite trail for rain. So you see as soon as you put that in, suddenly you have a uh, axis appear over in your preview. Okay. Next we'll come over to the emitter, add and we want emit continuously. This will make it infinitely spawn until it runs out of the maximum particles, which we'll get to in a moment. And then finally we come over to the initializer and we want to add a position within box. Okay, so before we continue, I wanna go over to the base system properties and this is where we can determine a few base things. Most importantly is the maximum particles and the material. So we're going to come over here to the materials and we're going to let it load looking for drop. Here we go. Blood drop. That's not what we want. Let's see. Yep, that blood drop could work. We'll use that blood drop. Okay. So now we're going to come over to the operator. We're going to add a movement basic which will allow the particle to move. So we will do that, and then we will give it a gravity, 
negative 600. So this is gravity. This um, is relative to the particle's z-axis. And so if it's positive, z, then it goes up. Negative z goes down. And you can see z is the blue axis, x is the y-axis, or x is red is the x-axis, and green is the y-axis. So like if I were to put this on 600, goes along that way. But we want our rain to fall down. Okay, so right now you can see it's a single stream. That's not particularly interesting. We don't want to make a, a rain particle where we have to make every individual drop, which lasts forever. That's not what we want. So we come over to a position within box, and we want to change the maximum and minimum bounds. So the way we're going to make this rain particle is we're just going to make it a thin box that it spawns in. So for that we're going to set its minimum to negative 16, negative 16, 0. You can see it's already starting to work and you see this outline of what the box is. And we're going to go over to the max. We're going to make it 16, 16, 1. And now you see, whoops, there's our thin box. Okay. So now let's uh, control the lengths of the drops. So we come over to the render sprites. So we want to not constrain radius to length. And then we can change this length. Okay, that's not actually doing anything. So what we'll do actually do is make that 2000 and then make this 2000. So see, that's, that's way too long. So we'll just go 300 to 300. Uh, how about 50 to 50? 5 to 5. Yeah, there we go. 10 to 10. 20 to 20. 30 to 30. Yeah, we'll go 30 to 30 for now. Okay, so now we're going to come over to an initializers. And we are going to set up the color. So we're going to color random. So you could change the color right here, but in general, it's better practice to use the color random, because then you can do things like this. We'll go from 180, 180, 180 to 55, which is a fairly light gray, to 120, 120, 120, 255, which is a darker gray. Okay, and then we want to add a little bit more blue to it. Okay. So now our drops are really fat. We don't want that. So now we'll go to the initializer and add, and we want radius random. So come over here. So here's the radius maximum is minimum maximum between one and one. Let's do between one and two. There we go. That's not too bad looking. Now let's control make the speed faster. Make the gravity higher. Now they drop faster. Okay, so now let's uh, control their life, which is add. We want a alpha fade and decay, so they just kind of fade out. Okay, and an initializer. We want lifetime random. So we'll give them... Fairly short lifetime. There we go. Let's uh, go and make the radius smaller. Actually, let's do one, two, one and a half. Okay, and then we'll come over here to the render sprite trail. And actually, I think we can probably randomize the length too, maybe. That I'm not convinced of. Uh, I don't see length as an initializer. It's probably not an operator. Yeah, it's not an operator. So you can probably remap it, but that's a bit beyond the scope right now. So we'll just make this between 30 and 60. Okay, that's not too bad. But now we want it to spawn faster. So we come over to the emit continuously. And we increase the emission rate. 
There we go. Make this. There we go. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, so I think that's a pretty good basic rain particle. So then we save this and we'll stick it over here. We will name it test. That works. And then we go back to the source filmmaker and we come over and add a particle system. And we will load from test, we'll add rain between zero and five seconds. Sure. Okay, so where is this particle system? It's right there. So now every time you add a particle system, you need to scrub off the current shot and then back on. Let me get the camera over to our particle, wherever it may be. I don't really know where it is. There it is. I just saw it. Move this over here. And come over here. And there's our rain particle. So that's the real basics of using the particle editor. Um, like I said, there's more that you can do, but this is the basics of it, and that's the basics what you need. Um, in general, as a general rule, you always want to have a movement basic, position within either sphere or box, color random, radius random, lifetime random, and probably emit continuously. In my general experience, those are going to be there for more or less any type of particle you ever want to find yourself making. Okay, I hope this was a good uh, foot in the door. You can use the Valve Developer Wiki's articles on the particle editor to help you figure out more uh, advanced techniques. In, I'm sure there's tutorials online. I, I checked Zachariah Scott. I haven't checked if he has any, but if anyone were to have videos on particles, Zachariah Scott on YouTube would probably be the first that I would check. There is another one. I can't quite remember what the name was. It was like Jim's SFM Tips a Day or something to that effect. I would check that out. And there's a few other individuals on YouTube who go into depth with different source filmmaker techniques. And I'm sure at least one or two of them have touched on particle editor and making fancy particle effects. So I hope this was educational. I hope this helped you get a basic idea of how to operate the particle editor. And I know at first glance it can be a bit scary. It has a really obtuse Spartan interface to it. But it's really not that complicated once you get the basics of it figured out. It's like if you go into the particle editor completely oblivious to it, you'll fiddle with one or two things. Ah, oh, I'm not getting a particle. I don't understand this. So maybe you'll crack open another particle and you'll see that it's just completely filled to the brim with these things and you have no idea what half of them do. So I feel like this is a bit of an easier way to get into the particle editor and I really hope that this helps people feel more comfortable being willing to experiment with the particle editor and see what kind of particles they can create. So experiment with it. That, that is my suggestion. Experiment with it. Play with it. Don't be afraid to fail and to have your particles break incomprehensibly. That's how you learn. That's how you learn what works and what doesn't work. And even within your failures, you'll find new combinations of things that work so that you can try them again in later experiments. And eventually, you can come together and make some pretty freaking cool particles. That's all I have for now. Until next time.